Hello and welcome to LCTV News. I'm Alice Becerra. In this edition of LCTV News, City Council approves loan, the Walk for My Brother's Table, Lynn Museum and Lynn Arts Fundraiser, and much more. Lynn City Council approved a request from Mayor Thomas McGee to borrow $4.5 million from the city's bailout budget. The home rule petition approved earlier this year by the council helped balance the FY18 and FY19 budgets. They are still concerned by officials about the FY20 budget. The city is still short $1.1 million even with the borrowing of the loan. Mayor McGee believes approval will give the city of Lynn the best chance to move forward towards a stable and stronger budget. In order to save money, Sean Cronin, the Fiscal Stability Officer for the City of Lynn, recommended the city look at several areas to save money and make it possible to put money in the Stabilization Fund and for capital improvement. One area suggested by Cronin was health insurance. Healthcare costs are carrying a deficit of $400,000. $400, With increased immigration and forced actions happening throughout the country, faculty and staff of Lynn Public Schools are being trained on how to support students who are affected by these actions. The training is part of the Lynn Public Schools professional development, which is advocated not only by educators, but by parents as well. Its intent is to help prepare schools, schools personnel response to the fears held by students and parents. This annual training is required by the Safe and Inclusive Schools Resolution, which was brought forth by the North Shore Labor Council Women's Committee and passed in 2017 by the Lynn School Committee. Lynn police arrested a 21-year-old man on Wednesday, October 31st, after officers responded to a potential suicide attempt. Alfonso Weiwei was charged with cocaine, trafficking, marijuana, and Xanax possession with intent to distribute. Weiwei was also charged with being in violation of the city knife violation, numerous firearm possessions, which included carrying a loaded firearm and firearm possession without a firearm identification card. A family member informed Lynn police that Weiwei had threatened to commit suicide. Upon arriving to the scene, officers found Weiwei in his vehicle and were able to talk him out of the car. There they recovered a .40 caliber Glock that Weiwei had on him and drugs that were in larger bags. According to Lt. Kimmick, Lynn police seized 81 grams of cocaine, 4 pounds of marijuana, Xanax pills, and 1,360 in cash. Ariana Wendell was charged with crack cocaine possession with a tent to distribute after Lynn police witnessed her distributing drugs out of her car last Tuesday. According to Lt. Michael Kimmick, Lynn police witnessed a man get into Wendell's car shortly after 1.30 p.m. and leave shortly after in what officers believed was a drug transaction. The man who entered Wendell's vehicle was identified as Jake Mastro Marino of Peabody who was arrested and charged with heroin possession. After taking Wendell into the police station, officers found 20 grams of heroin and 14 grams of crack cocaine with an estimated street value of 3,400. Officers also found 1,260 and another 260 was recovered from windows, according to Lt. Kimmick. The Monroe Street development broke ground on Monday, November 5th. The $90 million development will transform what was once the community garden into a 10-story building. LCTV was on the scene. So I would say let this today, like Ian Matzelager, be the end of the status quo. We can do better. We can build something great. Let this be the beginning of a new era marked in Lynn's history as our time and our empire. This project is unbelievable. It really is a, uh, a testament to everything that all of us, I'll include me in this, all of us uh, have been working for and hoping for, uh, for Lynn for uh, quite some time. We believe in Lynn and hopefully the new people walking in here, as we talked about earlier, uh, understand why we believe in Lynn. This development's a step in the wrong direction and we're going to keep pushing our elected officials, leadership, and um, we're going to organize the whole city to fight back against this kind of development. Based on what I've seen around the city, I can no longer sit back and watch this happen. I watch residents be forced out. One, two, three, go! Hey, that was good. Ahead of Tuesday's election, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Jay Gonzalez, Congressman Seth Moulton, and Lynn Mayor Thomas McGee spoke to Lynn residents on the importance of midterms and LCTV was on the scene. Supporters and volunteers of Senator Elizabeth Warren gathered Monday in Lynn, Massachusetts, ahead of Tuesday's midterm elections. We had, we had a, almost 3,000 people early voting in the city of Lynn. Uh, that ended on Friday. That's a pretty good number. 
Martin Nelson said his way of helping the senator was making phone calls. What's it been like today? Um, I'd say it's been a good 50-50. Not, no hang-ups, but just a lot of people who don't want to answer their phones. But everyone who did answer is very happy. Other Democratic nominees on the ballot were also in attendance. Congressman Seth Moulton and Governor hopeful Jay Gonzalez helped welcome Senator Warren. I say health care is a basic human right. We fight for basic human rights. No young person who's trying to get an education should be crushed by student loan debts. We will bring down the student loan debt burden. Sorry. You know, I'm going to keep this fight up. Right now, the Republicans think that health care should be only for the rich. They think tax breaks should go to billionaires and giant corporations. And they think that people who are on Social Security should have to pay for it. Those who attended the event are going to get out and knock on some doors in hopes of securing some last-minute voting for the senator and the congressman. For LCTV News, I'm Alice Becerra. To celebrate Latino leadership, culture, and contribution, Breed Middle School held its Hispanic Heritage Celebration hosted by the Spanish National Junior Honor Society, and LCTV was on the scene. As the proud leader of Bree Middle School, I am grateful that staff, students, and community partners are able to celebrate our incredible diversity together. We hope you enjoy this great testament to Hispanic culture, something we treasure here at Breed. Thank you. History of Hispanic Heritage Month. On June 11th, 1968, California Congressman George E. Brown together with 19 co-sponsors, introduced House Joint Resolution 1299, authorizing the president to proclaim annually the week including September 15th and 16th as National Hispanic Heritage Week. The purpose of the resolution was to give recognition to the Hispanic influence in the role of Hispanic people in American history. On October 30th at City Hall, Domestic Violence Awareness Month proclamation ceremony was held and LCTV was on scene. At Hawk, we have the honor of holding many roles in the lives of survivors. Each role we play strives to empower survivors of abuse, to help them be whole and strong, and to create communities so safe that there is no abuse to survive. We do this work in a national climate where one in three women have been victims of some form of physical abuse by an intimate partner with their lifetime. A time where domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women, a time where every nine seconds in the U.S. a woman is assaulted or beaten. The staff at Hawk work each and every day to provide vital support and services for victims of domestic violence and abuse across the North Shore. LCTV was on the scene for the New England Silver Gloves this past weekend at the Lynn Tech Field House, LCTV's first live stream boxing event in many years. Here are some highlights from Saturday's events. To watch the full event, visit lintv.org and click on Video On Demand. Now for some sports updates. The Lynn Classical Rams men's soccer team advanced to the quarterfinals of the state's tournament after a 1-0 victory over Shawshin Sunday at Manning Field. The Rams will face off against Arlington for the Division II North quarterfinals. The St. Mary's boys soccer team advanced to the second round with a 5-0 victory over Rockport on Sunday at Manning Field. The Spartans will face off against Bishop Fenwick in the second round. The Lynn English Bulldogs were eliminated from the state tournament after a 28 loss to Danvers at Manning Field this past Friday. The Lynn English Bulldogs were eliminated from the state tournament after a 28 to 7 loss to Danvers at Manning Field this past Friday. Danvers will face off against Tewksbury in the Division III North Final. Up next for English is a game against an opponent that is yet to be determined and the season finale against cross-town rival Lynn Classical. The St. Mary's boys football team advanced to the sectional final against Neshoba Valley after a 30-24 victory over Greater Lawrence Friday at Manning Field. Jaden and Chavarria scored three total touchdowns, including the game-winning touchdown from quarterback Derek O'Leary. On this week's Community Connector, we highlight the 37th annual Walk for My Brother's Table at the Church of Holy Name.
Spark Messenger. I'm present at my brother's table. I want to thank you all for coming today to help our guests and continuing to feed the people we serve every single day. This will be my third year doing this walk. I do a little bit with uh, Brother Sable in the city, so. So we're here representing our radio station, 103.3 Amp Radio. Um, we're giving away some free, cool things. We have Halloween passes here today. And yeah, representing our station. Bottom line is to raise money for Brother Sable. We do very well uh, because of the support in the community. Uh, this just gives us an added boost and a little bit more exposure with uh, the people of the community. It's, it's um, really an invaluable asset to the community. You know, you can go down there, get a free meal uh, when you need it the most, 24-7, 365. You know, we, we brave the, the storms and the cold to get down there and, uh, and provide meals. So I think it's really truly a pillar of the community. It is awesome to be here. It is such a great event, great cause, um, a great come out too. And um, this is just great that a lot of local people from the area are here to support and be here. Um, what made me want to volunteer is that I've been a Lynn native pretty much my whole life and I'd never had, I'd never come down. So about five years ago, I decided to uh, step it up finally, uh, stop putting it off and head in there and instantly fell in love with what they were doing. Thank you all very, very much for coming. Our guests and I appreciate your help. And again, have a good day and a good walk. And this week's Lynn Lowdown host, David Riley Jr. sat down with a member of the Lynn Museum and Lynn Arts to discuss their upcoming fundraiser. Here is this week's Lynn Lowdown. Welcome to the Lynn Lineup, a show that highlights upcoming events happening in the Lynn community. Today we're here to talk about a walk through Lynn, which is a fundraising event for the Lynn Museum and Lynn Arts organizations. And I'm joined today by Buffy from the Lynn Museum. Thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. So, um, what exactly is it that the Lynn Museum does that Lynn Arts does? Oh, sure. So the Lynn Museum, Lynn Arts, um, as a lot of people do know, we are the curators of Lynn's history. Um, started out on Green Street as just the historical society and through the years has evolved into the museum that we know today. And then we merged with um, Lynn Arts a few years back and so we're like a cultural campus in downtown Lynn. At the museum, we have exhibits we, that um, glorify the glory days of Lynn with the industry and um, technology that um, focus on the shoe making industry, GE, Lydia Pinkham, and a current exhibit is Lynn in the Great War of World War One. And then over at Lynn Arts, we have um, changing exhibits, we have artist studios. What we do outside of the museum, though, is we have a wonderful program with the Lynn Public Schools called the Lynn um, Public Schools Multi-Visit History Detectives, and it's with the third graders. And our education manager goes to the third grade classrooms, and she has a workbook for them, uh, talking about Lynn's history, and she goes over everything. And then in the spring, they come back, they come to the museum for a visit where they're actually seeing hands-on what they learned in the fall about. So that's a great program. Um, and then we have events. And I'm here today to talk about our fall fundraiser in, in two weeks. And the museum and Lynn Arts are fantastic institutions downtown. Obviously, the museum is well, just a you. wealth of historical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And Lynn Arts, the, the arts and culture that come out of there is incredible. Um, the artists that work out of there are amazing, and if you haven't been down, definitely go down and check them out. Um, so again, this fundraiser is to help benefit those two organizations, and every year there's a different theme. Um, so this year's theme is a celebration about the whole city, so uh, diversity, the history, the natural resources, the neighborhoods. Um, so how are you guys going to highlight all of that at the museum? Yeah, so our walk through Lynn is going to be a virtual walk through Lynn. When you enter the museum, there will be footprints on the um, floor that will guide you to different areas of Lynn in the city. We're going to have a large interactive map where people can go and um, point to um, place mark their favorite walks of Lynn or their favorite places of Lynn's, write down memories. We're going to have um, looping videos of uh, like the making of Lynn Way and um, different historical 
happenings in Lynn. We, um, because we are the curators of Lynn's history, just itself, the museum is a walk through Lynn on its own. We're going to have um, on the table decor our old maps from Lynn and postcards from Lynn. So um, even though we'll be inside, you'll have a full feeling of being in the city itself. And you'd also mention that there would be a scavenger hunt, too. Oh, right, which, which could be hunt. really fun. Yeah, no, one of the, our board members, this was her idea, and I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, um, uh, guests will be able to, um, and we're going to have a, a winner at the end if you get all your stars on your card, but on the cards there'll be different clues about our exhibits. So the people will go up on the second floor to our exhibit space, find what the clue is, and they'll get a sticker, and then at the end of the evening... Um, we'll draw one winner, and they're going to get a basket of our Lynn merchandise. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of having a scavenger hunt in a museum. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun, and it will keep, it'll just keep people, um, I hope, entertained and, and fully involved in being at the fundraiser instead of just, you know, coming for a drink and a little food. And, and speaking of that, um, so there will obviously be music and dancing and all that, and um, you guys are also going to have food from the fantastic uh, Lintech Culinary yes, students. Yes, yeah, we're very excited to be partnered with the Lintech. Um, the culinary students will be doing the catering, and the graphic design stu students are going to be helping out um, with the keepsake book we're going to be giving all our guests. The keepsake book is being put together by my colleague Sue Walker. She's our researcher, and um, it will focus on all the different neighborhoods of Lynn, and she'll be doing the writing for it, and we'll be using photos from our collection in the book. And so um, the graphic design students are going to be putting that to together for us. So we're really excited to be partnered with the school. And you had mentioned that with the music, it won't just be any music, if you could explain that Right, a thank bit. you. Yeah, one of our board members, Seth Album, is going to be our DJ for the evening, and he's fantastic. And the music is going to be focused on the musicians who have come through Lynn. So whether it's Manning Bowl or at the Lynn Auditorium, we'll be having like the, you know, Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, Ray Charles, uh, Paul Abdul's coming up. So we'll have music that's been played live here in Lynn. All right, so we have a few minutes left. Um, I know there's a live auction. So w what sort of stuff is going to be auctioned off? Yeah, thank you. So as I, we mentioned, this is our fall fundraiser. It's our major fundraiser for the year. And um, we are having a live and silent um, auction to help um, with the proceeds. So we will be having at the, um, a, you can win a bid on a trip to Punta Cana at the Western Punta Cana Resort. You could maybe have breakfast or lunch with the mayor. We have Red Sox tickets and a private booth for next year. Um, Bruins tickets versus the Capitals in January, so that will be a good game. Um, Couture Planet is doing a custom bag for us, and if we get a bidding award, or on that one, they'll do a couple of bags if people want them. Uh, so yeah, a lot of different things, such as art. Some of the art um, artists that are in our current exhibit in the museum have donated pieces of art to be um, auctioned off. Yeah, so, and if people want a full list, they can just give me a call before the event. I can give them more. And um, as you were saying, this is the big event of the year to raise funds. You guys don't actually get any public funds. No, we so do not. So this is all going to be going back into the museum and the Lynn Arts and the programs that you run. Absolutely, yeah. We are a nonprofit. We do not get any funding from, well, we don't get funding from the city or the state. We, we rely on our donors, our sponsors, uh, grants. Um, so, yeah, this is our major fundraiser, and, and um, that's what we depend on, yeah. And the tickets are $50, and we do have um, a 1629 sponsorship level, um, which is the year Lynn was incorporated. So 1629 to be a sponsor, you get a listing in the keepsake book, you get some tickets, and we have a couple of those sponsorships still available. And how exactly do people get to, do you want people to reserve ahead of time? Are they going to be at the door? Well, <laughs> because as an event person, I would love if everyone bought tickets in advance and I could have that beautiful registration list ready when they come. But it's both. You can get buy tickets in advance, which I would love to see happen, or tickets will be available at the door. And those are online that they can get them in advance if yep, they Yep, they want? can go onto our website, um, lynnmuseum.org, or um, yes, that's how, the, or they can come by the museum to purchase tickets. We're open Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4. All right, so we have only about another minute left. Um, I know that in addition 
to that event is also the next day something happening for Lin Arts Yes, as well. absolutely. So at Lin Arts is having their open studios on Saturday the 17th and the hours are 10 to 4 and it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, the Lin Arts artists are displaying um, their art for sale and they'll also have open studios so it's your chance to go in and, and visit the artists while they're in their studios working. Um, it's a great time to pick up gifts for the holidays so yeah that's 10 to 4 on the Saturday. Thank you again, Buffy, for joining Thank me you, today. Dave. Again, that's a walk through Lynn, which is a fundraiser to benefit the Lynn Museum and Lynn Arts organizations, happening on Friday, November 16th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Lynn Museum on uh, Washington Street. Uh, that's it for this edition of the Lynn Lineup. Thanks for watching. And now for some upcoming local events. On Thursday, November 8th, there will be a public meeting to discuss the future vision of Western Ave at 6 p.m. at the Druick School. On Saturday, November 10th, the Washington Street Baptist Church will be holding their 14th annual Fall Craft Fair from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Sunday, November 11th, the Department of Veterans Service will be hosting its annual Veterans Breakfast from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Breakfast will be served at 8.30 and the ceremony begins at 10 a.m. The ceremony will include music by Lynn Public School Band and others, a drill presentation by the Lynn English Marine Corps JRROTC, and special presentation to veterans in attendance. For more information, contact the Department of Veterans Service at 781-596-6911. On Monday, November 12th, LCTV will be hosting its monthly Paramount film series. This month's film is The Maltese Falcon. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Thank you for watching LCTV News. I'm your host, Alice Becerra. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to our website, www.lintv.org to find out all the great things happening here at LCTV. Have a great day.